What's up? This is Fred Green. Today we're going to be talking about the coronavirus. You know, should uh, people just stay home? Or should stay they come home. to church? I don't know, but um, we're talking about that. And also, you don't know. I don't uh, know. I don't know. Uh, but then also we're going to talk Stay about home. love. What is love? Amen. Um, you know, we have like this uh, definition of love. So we're going to talk about that. So uh, uh, stay tuned. Listen. And yeah. In the name of the Lord. Testing. One, two. Pictures. Uh, all right. Episode 59. Almost 60 of the Trucker Faith Podcast, where we have an honest and necessary conversation about what it means to be a Christian. Conversations that you might not be having at your local Sunday morning service. I'm your host, Tech, along with Ray Green and Jay Blunt. What's going on, uh, Pastor Green? You know, how's everything going? Everything is good. Uh, good week. Uh, interview went well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Fred is good. Fred is killing it. <laughs> Good week. Keep it humble. Uh, Pastor Blood. Uh, we it's good. I want to shout out uh Pastor Victoria Goodwin, hey. Hey. who just started Wife Prep U. Okay, hey, it's an online prepped. course for women looking to uh prepare for marriage. Wow. Uh, Wife Prep U completely sold out. First one. That's so sh- I want to shout her out and all the ladies. Uh, preparing their their self for marriage, uh, yeah. So a lot of great things happening. It's good because uh, we're we going to talk about love. Uh, yeah. Anything else? Nah, I'm I'm good. I uh, had a productive week so far, Amen. and uh, I plan on being even more productive. Uh, yeah. painting. So you still paint? I am in my mind. Amen. I just got to put it on paper. We're gonna wait till the canvas. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I'm actually going to be partnering with uh, someone and have my own little channel on their their channel. Oh, hey. that's what's up. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. I'm believing, guys. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, I, I watched uh, Yes Man. Oh. Jim Carrey. Yeah. Oh, yes yeah, Man. Movie. Yeah. And so, for the last two months, if anybody asks me to do something... For the most part, I've just been saying yes. Um, to try to push myself to just do more, be more productive, versus you know saying no and questioning it myself. Has yeah. it been work? No. <laughs> 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 no, I mean it's fine so far. It's, everything's cool so far. So. Yep. Amen. Uh, everything's good, with me. I do have another announcement. Yes, yes. Right. What's up with this announcement? Last time we talked to me, I don't know that my last hour. Right. Okay. Hence the glass. Hence the glass. Yo, is this what happens with AIDS? I, I found don't know. out that my nose and my throat are trash. Oh, a couple that- weeks I had to go take a test for sleep apnea, mm-hmm. which I tested positive. Mm-hmm. Okay. And now I have to wear this stupid. Sleep mask. So you gotta oh. put the whole contraption on now. I haven't got it yet, mm. but next week I had to go sleep there again. Mm. Oh, you had to sleep at the place. I had to sleep at the hospital. It was the worst sleep I ever got in my life. Oh, wow. I don't even know how. Uh, I mean, it was just uncomfortable. Mm. Was the bed uncomfortable? It was or uncomfortable. Was... You were hooked up to all these wires, and then you had to stay a certain way so oh, that the wires man. would move. It's like, bruh, you well, wanted me to sleep, so <laughs> I, I, I didn't even really sleep. Well, most of that uh, night. That... But uh, yeah, I got, I'm gonna have to put this. I'm trying to take my health more seriously. So right, right. In right. the past, I was just man, freak, freak that. Mm. But now, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm with a stupid mask. Cause mm-hmm. my doctor, and I'm about to get my chin back. He, when I first went to my doctor, mm-hmm. it was it was kind of creepy. He like hit my belly. It was like pop, 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 and then he hit my throat. Pop, pop. He was like. That's sleep apnea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's dude like, was a chi- Tai Chi master. <laughs> he's like, boop, boop, boop. he's like, see that belly? That's sleep apnea. Wow. He could have said it a different way. I know, different. but I didn't. I didn't <laughs> believe rude, him. Rude, rude. And then 
<laughs> so so what's going on? So when you say your nose and throat, like what exactly I, does that mean? He said my something about my tongue getting in the way of my throat. Oh, so you're dang. I know. How do you lose and, weight in your tongue? Like what? what no, happened? it's not. You, the thing is, there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, okay. oh. you so, just gotta wear the stupid mask. So you can't mm-hmm. like like there's uh, like so forever according to him. Yeah, like I was hey, saying, you're just gonna be Darth Vader every your night. Your mouth is built for some people. Got you. But the so crazy been like thing this is, forever? yeah, probably. Wow. And and but this this is why this is why one of the reasons why I'm taking serious. One, got you. At least the weight gain. Leads to it high leads blood pressure. To it. Okay. Leads to high blood pressure. Okay. Leads to uh, anxiety. Yeah. And other things mm-hmm. as well. Because what happens is when your sleep is how your body recovers. Right. And if you're not getting enough oxygen, your body isn't getting recovered. So you're waking up tired even though you just slept. Gotcha. Blah, 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 blah. So your body isn't getting everything it needs to recover. So it's like under this constant state of stress. Right. And then I found out 80% of people who have sleep apnea mm-hmm. go undiagnosed right wow. all, I, I don't think it's as clear cut as this but it's basically like if you snore right it's a good chance you got sleep apnea. oh no well, i snore well you need to go get tested bro i probably won't but okay. I, that, that's what you know my, I, 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 I snore people, no. sometimes but uh it's a it's a real thing so mm. oh, I, I, so I what, what does the machine do though i've seen the machines I, before be but how does does the machine like push more oxygen yeah, it's in? Yeah, I, it, it, I have no idea. It's uh, maybe in a couple weeks. Later. I know you put have on you your seen nose. it. I, I googled it to see how stupid I would look, and then all my coworkers start calling me Bane because right, you exactly, like Bane. Look, right, like Bane, yeah. And uh, so you gonna have to schedule some time with your wife. You can't just roll over and be like, <laughs> "Hey, <laughs> <laughs> you want to do this before I put this on?" <laughs> Once I, put Once I plug up this machine, <laughs> I can't move. <move-y>, <laughs> and then I got to, I'm going to a youth retreat. In oh, May. and you got to bring that with you. Oh, I'm wow. like, hey, guys, listen to me. <laughs> 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 <Wow>. <laughs> so I, I don't know what is happening. It is. It's like that, except the mic part <laughs> is where the nose is. Man. So I, oh, you know, that is, that is the deal. Wow. So, so I hope you do all right. Whenever I'm on yeah. these streets, I'm trying to take better care of myself. So. That's good. That's I'm all rooting for you. I'm rooting for your recovery. Listening to your doctors. Absolutely. Um but pass the blood. What is today? Today is. Let's go, let's go. Today National is New Day. We have to get a uh a tune, maybe not. Today is International Women's Day. Oh. Hey. So I think it's perfect to shout out uh hey, so let's so you shout out I shouted out uh Pastor Retoya. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna shout out my wife too. Hey, and you shout out somebody. My wife. Okay, mm-hmm. I love that woman. She's so nice. Mm-hmm. She's so good to me. And you know what? My love for her mm-hmm. has increased. Beautiful, oh, man. It's weird. It has increased over like the past month. Month. Okay. Not that it was low, but it's yeah. like weird. I love you more. Beautiful. Uh, yes, my wife. She she's amazing. She yeah, she really holds it down. You got anybody else? Nope. Uh, Pastor Stephanie. Pastor Stephanie. That's what's up. Uh, Miller. I, I Miller. T- Pastor Stephanie Miller. Okay. I haven't talked to her a long time, but she has outside of my wife uh-huh. and my mother. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, she has had the greatest. Im- she's. She's been the woman that's had the She's a solid, back in my life. solid woman. Um, I done got she done kicked me out of her house. She done welcomed me back in. She helped <laughs> raise me. So I got crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah, much respect Pastor. to Pastor Stephanie. That's Who you got, uh, Fred? My wife. Oh, uh, you just trying to copy off of us. <laughs> my <laughs> wife, of course. Shout out to my wife, amazing woman, mother, uh, wife, and then also business owner. So, my wife. Hey, cool. All right. Oh, National Day, we got that. We got a National Peanut Cluster Day. Hey. Uh, so shout out to uh, the Humphrey that Boys. That's like the condition of your butt. Hmm? What? If you got too much doodle in your butt, you say wow. you got a peanut cluster. Man. Wow. Right. National you know- uh, <laughs> Proofreading Day. Hey, oh, my God. <laughs> so proofreading is super important. So, Bruh. So my national- proofreading is trash. Yeah, proofreading is super important. Mm. I've done, I've proofread many times and still find errors after pressing send. Yes. Well, so. I proofread 
anyway. Yeah. So here's very important. Today is daylight savings time. No, it's, it's the not. first day of daylight. Serious? Yeah. I mean, so the, it? yeah. So if you did not set your clocks for oh, today, man. you're late because <laughs> you're gonna lose an hour of sleep. No, yesterday. Uh, yeah. But if you didn't do it yesterday, Sunday, you're late. So wow. You gotta push your fast. push your clocks forward. Hey. Make sure you do that in your car everywhere. Hey, you know what's crazy? What's that? Those are all the wrong days. Oh yeah, because you on the eighth and Monday is the night. Is that true? <laughs> oh dang, that's true. <laughs> Let's keep going then. Okay, all right, keep going. All right, today is National Barbie Day. <laughs> <laughs> it's also I'm gonna make it quick. Today's today is National Crabby Day. It's our show Get Over It Day, which is perfect because I'm gonna ask you to get over what just happened. <laughs> it, listen, it, it was true. It's true. I got it all wrong. I got it all wrong. All right, so just real quick, Barbie crab meat and get over it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everybody. I'm like daylight savings on daylight a savings <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> Oh, okay. dang it. Ruined that one. All right. Praise God. Those are the days. We uh, are blessed. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Praise God. Oh, man. All right. So without any further ado, hope you got your hand sanitizer and you're rubbing it together because we got a hot take. All right. Here's the hot take. Uh, plain and simple. Corona. I, I'm still working through anxiety. Praise God for me. Corona is starting to cause me some problems, okay? Like, a uh, friend just showed me something, which I don't think that that was God that you showed me that. I started feeling sick when you showed me that. Like, oh my God, Corona caught me. Uh, it's it's two confirmed cases. In, it said three. Oh my God. Three confirmed it's cases. Three. Oh, Corona. Oh. Corona. Corona. All right. Here's the high take. Bruh, Jesus loves you. If you got corona, stay home and don't go to church. Mm. Yeah, be wise. Use wisdom. Oh. Yes. Oh, but the thing is, if you, you don't know you got corona, you could just think you got the flu. flu. But very, you, st oh you should God. still stay home. <laughs> That's <laughs> a good point. The flu <laughs> is not a reason to come. Like, That's true. Don't use if wisdom. You, if you are sick, stay home. <laughs> stay home. If you feel in oh, sniffly, sneezy, coughing, you know you're going to go to church and embrace people and touch the pews and seats and different things. Stay home. We will love you from afar. Yeah. We will miss you, but we will we will not like you <laughs> if you come. <laughs> if you give us if all you, the road. Yeah, right. you, stay yeah home. just stay home. Now, well, you know it's some churches out there. That gonna yeah. Be, what they gonna oh, say? I'm buying that Corona in the name of Jesus. Yeah. That Corona and devil ain't coming here. We having church. No matter what, yeah. at what point, and I guess this could be that. When the pastor gets it. At what point <laughs> should you not, should the churches be like, we not have it? I think when it gets uh, a full-fledged right? outbreak. Not, maybe I should say full-fledged outbreak. but Hopefully, prayerfully, like, that doesn't happen. Yeah, and prayerfully, that does, I, oh, I agree. God. I think when they start, sh if they start shutting down like schools, like schools and work and everything, I think that's the time for us to kind of use wisdom because you know I think we got prayer. I think I think we should minimize the spiritual aspect of it about prayer, mm -hmm. about that, and pray over there. But then also we ought to be wise as well. So, Absolutely, um, it's it's a balance of it. Yo, prayer is key. I, I have not been praying about this Corona. I've been praying. Because my kids going to school, they they coming back. Yeah. Like my, my son came back. I think uh, it starts with this with the kids. Actually, mm -hmm. I think parents got to do a better job at. Kids already are not very good at washing and, and cleaning up after themselves or sharing, you know, being careful of what they touch. Some Kids kind of do real. all. Yeah, we adults, adults don't do the greatest of jobs. However, I think that, you know, the kids are they be all in each other's face and touching and yeah. sharing everything. And then they mm -hmm. go back and the parents send the kids to school yeah. uh, sick because wow. they can't. They can't afford to take off work. All Bruh. kinds of stuff. I've seen some really snotty nosed kids at school and they just wiping their hands with their nose and doing everything else and sneezing. So parent it starts with the parents, but parents teaching the kids like just stay Teach home. Teach your kids about corona. 
yeah. just hygiene and you know being cleanly washing their hands properly please do it please do it and not i think if that happens yeah. we could we could prevent a lot of just being people being sick and uh public transportation if you are grabbing those rails on the oh. metro and on the uh, oh, praise God, I don't take the time. escalator Thanks. and stuff. Oh, thank you. Oh my you should gosh. have some some uh, gloves on or something. Like, oh. don't. This if is, Corona is in DC. If it gets in the it's metro, in the metro is over. Is it? Is it? Oh God. It's over. So just be very mindful of of that. <sighs> That's just every day now. I think that. Cause now that it's here, it doesn't go away unless everyone doesn't have it anymore. Does it? Is that it? Yeah, everyone has to be rid of it in order for it to be, you know, obsolete. Has it been, like people would say this? I know, like there was this thing with Ebola and the swine flu. Yeah, has it been like this though? I don't remember. I feel like it to a certain right now. I feel like. It's been it's been some something similar to this where it starts off like everybody's crazy, but then it just kind of dies down. You don't hear about it no more. I learned that like fifty six thousand people a year die from the flu. Almost a thousand some people every month mm. die from the flu annually. Anyway, yeah, and no one trips over it. Or but the flu, the corona is new. <laughs> That's what they say, but it's new, new. no, it's not new because yeah, it's I been. Heard, yeah, I heard. All right, you got the Simpsons. Who talked about it? <laughs> then you also have a Stephen King book who talked about the coronavirus coming from Wuhan, Providence, in China. No, it does. I promise you. Who said that? I promise you. Look it up. Don't the coronavirus ain't media new. Media take up. Nah, Simpsons. That, that Simpsons that, be on. If it's on the Simpsons, time, it, it happens. Make me nervous looking at them. Like, but nah, nah. But I heard the coronavirus is something to do. Oh, it's with on your flu. Lysol bottles too. What? Yeah, if you look at any Lysol bottle or your spray, it'll say human coronavirus on it. No, it does. I, on, I promise you it does. Go look at your Lysol bottles and it'll it say human say coronavirus. You corona. I am not lying. My it's wife even coronavirus. Con- yes, even my wife confirmed it. when She had a, a bottle of Lysol at her job and she, uh, she looked it up. I'm going to be an idiot. No, don't. Just go look it up. It's true. Listen, if you are... Sick. Stay home. We don't want the corona. We don't want none of your sicknesses. Stay home. Stay home. <laughs> Stay <laughs> gummy. That, oh, anyway, we're moving on. But I, that, that, I, I just feel like it's going to be somebody, some Christian, who can be like, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. Hold your hands. I'm like, it's going to be James. It's going to be me. <laughs> I volunteer. In the name of Jesus. I don't know what y'all talking about. Like, uh, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go like this. <laughs> <clears throat> Take oh. this mic thing off. <laughs> Let me. I'm just going to talk right on the mic. <laughs> oh, my God. Throw this whole little thing away. I'm going to dap all of y'all up. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, wait. We don't need whole hands. Did you see it? What was that? Huh? Oh, oh, I, 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 no, we are not doing that. We are not doing that. End the show. Corona the camera. Before this podcast, we used to hold hands underneath the table. <laughs> <laughs> you see this? Not down no here, more. they can see down here now. <laughs> we used to hold hands underneath the table before the before the coronavirus. Oh, it's gonna take me a second to find out. I look for it later. Now, now uh, he's he's switching up on us. All right. Well, listen, listen. If you got corona, do us all a favor and yeah. stay home. Amen. Or if you're sick, just stay home and wash your hands, wash your butt. I'm about to but I do one more thing. I say we should also pray for the people who are affected uh, are with right? the coronavirus. We that you know, Are you right? Yeah. We should pray. To pray for them, the people who are affected, and pray that more people uh-huh. don't get affected. You can't be trusting Jason sources. You got <laughs> Jason. Jason, you, do you have a bottle of Lysol at home? Jason, go I do. To the black look it up, bar, and when you do it, type. text me. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look. All right, um, all right, cool. All right, moving on. Corona, you have, you won't get the victory here, Corona. Uh, what am I trying to do? Yes, you won't get the victory here, Corona. You jerk. Um, all right, moving on to our main topic, which is going to be love. L-O-V-A. 
right? And it's kind of inspired from the conversation you had last week. Uh, I'm a Christian. I only watch Up Network, Christian televisions. These two chatty patties over here chatting it up. Uh, and then my wife, okay, I want to blame her, brought me Love is Blind like Eve brought Adam the apple. I was just, <laughs> I was just minding my it, business. It, you bit for and so we're talking about Love is Blind. If you guys have not seen Love is Blind on Netflix, a uh, big show. Talking about love. And in the show, I mean, without going all the way in it, love kind of gets thrown around a lot. Like everybody's like, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love. And so <clears throat> it just brought up a lot of uh, questions in me and thoughts about like, what is love? And do we really understand love? Mm. Like, and when do we do we really understand like and where do we get our our view of love from what is that what is that based on so starting off kind of broad what is where do you guys think you first saw or i don't want to say experience first saw what is could be portrayed as love like where do you think you you got your first definition of love from. Who you going with? Fred. Okay. I think my first, honestly, is crazy. Like, I would say TV. TV is was like my first, uh, how I kind of define and identify love. And I, the reason why I, I thought about it, why it's crazy, because it was um, modeled in my home with my, my father mm -hmm. and my uh, mom. But, as a kid, like I wasn't like nat naturally looking at it like a love thing or marriage thing. It was just like, okay, that's my parent. But as far as like the way it was, it, it felt like it felt cooler or I can't, I'm, I'm trying to put it into words what I'm kind of my experience, but I, like a lot of times I know when I began relationships, a lot of my comparisons was n not to my, well, earlier on was not to my mother and my father, but was more so in, you know, like, uh, like you always use this because it's true for me too. Corey Topanga or uh, mm -hmm. oh, uh, yeah. Steve and that. um, you know, or, you know, Steve Steve Laura, Laura, Steve Laura, Laura and um, Zach like, and Kelly, <clears throat> Zach, uh, uh, Zach and Kelly, like all all those, all the TV shows and movies is mm -hmm. kind of how I kind of model now. As I got older, you know, I realized like that was all a bunch of um, malarkey. Yes, malarkey and um. And I began to appreciate and kind of look at, you know, people who in real life that like like my parents and um, <clears throat> and begin to have that as more of an example and a standard. Um, but earlier on, it was that it was definitely that. Mm. Pass the blue. I would say for me, the first time that, you know, I guess love was displayed or that I recognized it, it had to be from uh, probably my mom. Not to say that my dad. Um, did not show us love because he definitely did. But love is usually shown differently in, with men or displayed or is that the word shown? Mm -hmm. Men usually show love differently. Mm -hmm. um, even to children, you know, there's this tough love that comes usually with men, you know. But with, with my mom, she would like grab you up. And even as a young adult, she like one thing that uh, people loved about her was her hugs. Like no matter how old you were, our or were when she hugged you, you kind of went, you just felt like a kid again, you know? So she definitely, I remember um, her displaying love constantly in that manner, whether it was um, the hugs, the kisses, you know, she kiss you up, you know, you grown man, you like, ah, <laughs> mom, <laughs> you know, all of those things. So definitely as a child with my mother, um, my grandmother, too. My grandmother, she would definitely show love. It was a tougher love, but still, it was a mix. But, yeah, that's mm -hmm. what that's what I remember. Or having that feeling of being loved, I should say. Yeah. What do you think you first saw? Do you wear romantic love? What do you think you first romantic saw love? It was probably TV or movies. I, didn't, I probably didn't understand, you know, exactly what it was. But probably television. Um you know the kissing things of that nature oh, actually yeah. my parents kissed in front of us they mm -hmm. they do a little pack they wouldn't 
thank God. <laughs> but um, yeah, cause our movies were real big in my household, mm. so my dad would be you know oh oh, oh ducking me down and then, close your eyes, close your eyes. Every once in a while, I get peeking between the fingers. <laughs> But yeah, that was probably the first time I seen like the romantic side out, outside of the home because I did see uh, my parents, you know, show affection towards right. one another, which is a beautiful thing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting. I'm trying to think too, like when. Um, I think I think for man, I think for love in general, mm-hmm. I don't know if it was really displayed like for me. I tend to be an affectionate person but like i know I, I, my mother wasn't really isn't really affectionate like i started and not saying like like a, a boastful thing but almost really like a, a shameful thing from for my family environment mm. like i started the us uh, saying i love you to each other mm. it wasn't something that we did mm. um it wasn't until like like middle school or high school, mm-hmm. or at some point in like uh, grade school, they got begin to speak to me about like saying like I love you and expressing mm. love to you. That's something that I mean I could be misremembered, but we never really did. And then my father, he wasn't he was there, but he wasn't fully uh, present. Right, right. So he maybe would have been the more affectionate out the two, but he wasn't really present. Mm. mentally and sometimes physically to even to even really do that. So that that understanding of love and that and like like a a way outside of romanticism, I don't know, I kinda had to walk through with God with just that first basic thing of saying and expressing to people one that you love them. I think romantic love real, real quick, when you when you said it, did you understand it? Cause you said it in middle school. When you started saying it, did you understand what you were saying? I think I understood it in terms of like family. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like uh, when you love a family member, mm-hmm. and, but like not like love, love, and then romantic love. Right, right. That was is is definitely TV. Definitely, mm-hmm. uh, freaking. Korean Topanga, Korean Topanga television, like, and it's it uh, it's so wild thinking about it. At least it wasn't too bad. Like TV back then versus TV nowadays, the difference is night and day. It's night yeah. and day. But it, I, I, I think though, <clears throat> sorry, I think what's interesting about it is though is that <laughs> Corona. No, uh, I think that like. <laughs> <laughs> what's interesting <laughs> about that what's interesting about that is like bruh that's I think a lot of people get their first view of love I do. Mm-hmm. and we don't realize that that's fake mm-hmm. sure yeah, like, yeah, I don't yeah. think people ever come to that conclusion that it's fake that your first introduction of what love is mm-hmm. was actors in yeah. the script and, and uh, Disney movies too that's Disney that's movies, a lot yeah, of their uh, whether it's an animal or a human, yeah. a lot of their yeah. scripts are uh, related to that uh, romantic style of love, and I think a lot of girls, especially, are mm-hmm. fed that at a young age. Mm-hmm. The the boy and girl, Prince Charming mm-hmm. type, you know, love type thing. Yeah, and I think I think the reason why it's so easy, like we don't make that distinction even as adults mm-hmm. like about like what love like fake love and real love is sure. because when you think about the word love just in general you think mm-hmm. about you're thinking about positivity sure you're thinking about you're not thinking about hardship so it's easier to in your mind think like oh okay like yeah that's that is what love looks like love yeah. looks like not really getting in the fight love looks mm-hmm. like um the cosby's like the co- the cosby show yeah like love looks yeah love looks like you know you yeah. playing music and you the whole family dancing and the, yeah. uh you know that, like living in a brownstone in new york exactly <laughs> that's that's with it when you think about love that's the type of feelings that in, initially that you think about but you know you don't think about so so i think that's part of the reason why even as adults like a lot of times we don't really realize like that was fake until we actually get into a romantic love relationship and you realize like 
oh, this is not that's, this I, is not like TV. I think adults still do it because I think we we get so emotionally invested in a lot of these shows that we probably don't even have like like for me, I was surprised when couples in shows were not really in love outside the show. Like when I say Bill Cosby and Felicia Rashad. Right, yeah. I was like, y'all not married for real? (laughs) Like Jim and Pam on the office. office, I was like, what you mean? Right. Y'all I mean like there's no way this chemistry is not real. Right, yeah. Like I you you believe what you see. And then I, I think a lot of times we take those ideas of love and those those perfect, you know, and even the situations that happen that they write in the script as far as negative things and these hurdles that they have, they always end mm. well and the season right, goes yeah. on and the kids for the most part are pretty well behaved mm. and there's usually a good cop, bad cop, but at the end, like the show usually always ends with the with the music. Yep. You know? And um, I think that we take mm. those often take those ideals and bring them into real life, real life and yeah. expect them to play out as such. Don't play out like that. Yeah. And go ahead. Yo, I'll you see know what show you. gave me <laughs> like anxiety? What's that? Yeah. Blackish. Uh, oh, that's Jordan a good show. Blackish. I love Blackish. You talk about when they was was going to bring a and divorce. They would not. They would not work it out. Yeah, yeah. Like it yeah. was like seven episodes. Yeah. I'm like, yo. Yeah. What is happening? It was because good though. It was real though. It was stressful. oh, blackish. Yeah. Wait a minute. Blackish. blackish is the show with, with Anthony, Anthony Anderson. Anderson. But yeah. but part okay. of, part of that it just kind of a little background. I think the writer or something like that had uh-huh. some uh, part of why he wrote that. If I'm if I remember what he read, it's like he was kind of going personally. He was kind of going. Yeah, they that. actually never get a divorce. Okay, yeah. yeah. So so like that's just interesting that he kind of wanted to illustrate that on TV because we talk mm. about TV yeah, yeah. to show the realness of it like it doesn't always get so easily worked out. Bruh, you know this from music mm. and it's not just in music, it's in like film theory. Mm. We need that tension to resolve. Yeah. You know mm. in music you got that core like you hit that sus. Mm. Like people don't know they need to hear that one mm. or, they, or they don't know they need to hit that or like it's certain tension that builds mm-hmm. in like television, music, whatever. Sure. And that we needed to resolve. And that was stressful for me because it's like it was like a good long episode art and they would do other stuff in it. Right. It wasn't all about that. And yep. it was just like, yo, bro, are they <laughs> and I and Is I this think, gonna end? Yeah. No. It was like I'm not like you like you said, we it used to it when by the time at the end of the episode it all it it always it works, works out. out, right? Right. And right. you know that Jim and Pam are somebody's relationship goals. Uh, absolutely, yeah. And absolutely. It, it's just interesting because, all right, we like we see explosions in TVs, and we see like a mm-hmm. thousand bullets shooting at people. And right, dude is just like ducking the bullets. Right, or, like mm-hmm. the crazy things that people do. Uh, let's say even with the I low key think I could dodge a bullet even at this size. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. See? You might hear a little bit of meat, but I think <laughs> Dude, I, I can move. I think I can, I can get out the way. <laughs> I love don't, don't don't I mean I'm just I'm letting you into my mind right now. <laughs> my wife probably shaking her head like, baby, please just don't. <laughs> Baby, Jason was disagreeing with you. I know, (laughs) even this right here, I'm not moving at all. I was like, just Uh, dodging the bullets. uh, Just light you up. Like, like, uh, uh, scalp. But but look, we look at like those type of things, and then like all the crazy stuff that Michael, other people do, and not get fired. Oh yeah, yeah. And we know, okay, that's just. You know, it's TV. Sure. But, like, when it comes to love and relationships, yeah. we don't make that same separation mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. that this is just TV. And yeah. it's like when we talk about black people needing representation sure. and how people use mm. media to paint black people in a certain type of way. Mm-hmm. And if, if that's their only interaction with African Americans, right. then they think that's who African American is. Sure. I that's think true. When we're growing up and we get all these these misrepresentations of what love is, uh-huh. these are our only interactions with love, mm-hmm. and so we think that's that's what love is, and mm-hmm. so we go through life 
expecting this. Sure. This feeling, like we, we talked about it, like they 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 would say on the show, "Love is blind." Like I don't feel when they would start arguing, they would say, "I don't feel the butterflies." Yeah, or shout like, out to Gigi and her crazy. <laughs> or, you know, they'd be like, you know, but that's not. Yeah, that's not love, love. is in the feeling. Yeah, it, it can feel like something. Mm-hmm. There's feelings associated with love, but yeah. that's not what it is. Mm-hmm. It's like a side effect. I, I think we need a new will. word. A new, you mean? Let's not do that. <laughs> no, like I think a word. We need a new word between like and real love. And it's what like, you mean between like and real love to uh to distinguish uh, distinguish the yeah, uh, right differences. Right now, it's like if you like somebody, and then it's just doubling up in the word. What you mean? Mm. Like like. <laughs> I like love love. Like, like, like. I love I like, love. Like, like. Nah, I love like, love. Like. Because it's like, all right, if you like somebody, let's say you develop really, really strong feelings yeah. for that person. Uh-huh. Uh, you you begin to feel like, well, I have strong feelings for this person. This this must be love. This is similar to how I was told or taught to believe that love is. Mm. But it's like, no, you do have strong feelings, right? Mm-hmm. And maybe it's beyond like, right? But mm-hmm. let's call it another name. Let's call it loke. Mm. Loke. That's I loke, I loke you. I, loke you. I, I mean, loke why you. not? Words are made up, right? Someone yeah, determined that there but was a difference. But just saying that to somebody, you made somebody say, I know we're kind of joking, but it's saying, I loke you. Like, that would well, be weird. You get I mean, that's, cause it's, <laughs> that's just because it, it, it is not in existence yet. You just got to catch on. Yeah, catch on. Because uh, love is love That's is a, a serious thing. word. Uh, you know, love is not just, <sighs> love is just, it's not just. Can you love somebody mm-hmm. that you have not? I, I, I guess instead of saving it for last, maybe we can go mm-hmm. to First Corinthians thirteen. Wow, I was already there. And then take a look at at love. Yeah, four through seven. Uh, yeah. Hmm. All right. Okay. Um, Jason got an uh, Android. <laughs> oh, you want? <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Uh, from. Love is four. Let me. Uh... Real, he backed out. He was there. All right. So what I'm doing? Starting at verse four. Starting at verse four. Here we go. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. Let me keep going. Uh, uh, no, I think that's okay. okay. Good. I, I, so I guess I'm thinking about on this. I'm just throwing it out. Can yep. you have Excuse me. love? Out trial for for a time, but love would be tested during that. That's how love is tested through trial. Oh, so, oh yeah, can you have l- real love without testing? Hmm, good question. That's a good question. I don't know if love can exist without testing. I, you know, I'm just thinking about it now because the way we view love, mm-hmm. it it doesn't have to be tested. It is just I uh, really, really you meet all the things that I thought that I wanted. Sure, I mean, but that that will happen at a point, right? right. So when you first, like, let's say the first time you you said I love you to a Debbie, right, right, there mm-hmm. may not your love may have not have been tested yet, right, yeah. Or to a degree, you know, it might have withstood some high winds, but not like something real crazy. Right. But it existed. Yeah. So it existed, but yeah. it wasn't tested fully till probably later on down the line. But should I have told her I loke you? Well, <laughs> let's let's call Debbie and ask her <laughs> if she would have married you without. <laughs> With some loke. I'm, not trying, some I'm trying to think like I, I think me and Debbie would probably 
don't know how long we were dating. And then that's always like a thing. Like when you tell somebody you love them. Mm-hmm. I can't remember. When. Maybe we were dating like a month. My I, wife I don't probably knows because she's good with dates. I don't even argue with her when it comes to dates and times. Like this is what she's like is. on April 9th at 9 30 p.m. <laughs> you did this. I'd be like, oh, my bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, uh, what was the question? Do I tell uh, a person you, you love them? I, I, you just threw me off. I know, uh, right? It was just too you specific. You were saying, like, can, uh, like, when was you, you just... truly going to your experience, like, or any anybody's experience, mm-hmm. honestly, when we mm-hmm. first told uh, who we were with that we loved them before, like, true test, is that, is that, mm-hmm. is I went that through some love? tests, personally. Yeah. I went through some tests mm-hmm. before um, I married Jessica. Mm-hmm. And I believe my love was tested, and it was stand, and it still stands. Yeah, thank God, Amen. my love stands strong. Mm-hmm. And I don't have to <laughs> say that in a different accent, but um, it was my love was definitely tested, mm-hmm. and I don't think I threw the people throw the word out just loosely, right? Yeah, without any um, my I always tell my kids before they you know commit fully to something, you know, time is your best friend. Mm. Uh, time is your best friend you know true. people don't want to wait mm-hmm. all the always to like you you gotta let people go through enough things to see how how it's going to mm-hmm. pan out they got to be tested mm-hmm. so i always tell them especially my daughter like yo time is your best friend please mm-hmm. take the time to you know put people through it because anybody can act right for uh, a, a little while yeah you know so time and situations will show you who people mm-hmm. are and believe them when when they show you. So um, yeah. So love has to be tested. I, I believe it has to be, yeah. and I think I think it should be tested to a degree before commitment is made. Mm. To go to go beyond. I, I don't. I think you got to know. Yeah, I almost wonder if love has to be. I don't think you should create the test. Right. Yeah, like, <laughs> Let me be specific. I was. He uh, said, "I gotta test your love." I was just testing. <laughs> Not like I, I think. I think life will automatically, you know, yeah. create its own test. But um, yeah, I think it should be tested. Yeah, I think love has to be revealed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the test is the love revealing itself as as love. And so it's like rephrase that for us. Like I think, like uh, I think, love is not something. I I wonder, and maybe this just takes us down to a different. Like one of the scriptures says that a brother is something at all times, but a friend is born in adversity. Mm It's something about adversity that draws people together, or actually Mm -hmm. reveals the true nature of the relationship. Like some adversity, uh draws people apart Mm -hmm. and then some adversity brings people together Mm. i think there's something about testing that reveals love is there versus you deciding or feeling like you love someone well love is an action right so you you choose to love Mm. i think love is a choice so i i think that once 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 you choose it i think the testing is in the actions that that go behind the words and the feelings now let me be. Then as, go ahead. Tell do me it. If I'm being too. Yes, you already know it when you ask that. I don't. <laughs> go ahead. I'm messing uh, with you. Is is the is the choice in the continual loving? Is the initial? Is the choice in the initial love? I don't know what I'm saying. I'm trying to say like, like love Give is an a example, choice, huh? mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But you almost have to even going back to the scripture. You almost have to continuously. Choose absolutely every day. To love mm. like marriage is a lifelong commitment, but right. you have to choose to love that yeah. person every and day. commit to them daily. I, I think it reminds me back about our passion conversation. Mm-hmm. What about and, it? and to me, people treat love like we treat passion. Like if I'm not enthusiastic, the, there must be a oh, sign nah. that something is is wrong. But I right, think right. it's that choice. Yeah, absolutely. To be committed. Right. 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 Like I'm choosing. Right. That this is how I'm going to act towards you. I'm choosing right. that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm choosing uh, commitment. Pastor Green, what do you think? Oh, man, I was hoping you don't turn it. Because I, I, I don't, and mainly because I'm just thinking 
it really provoked a lot of uh uh thoughts in my uh, brain I, I haven't settled on um one um but yeah i i think i think i'm i'm going down the line with you guys as far as like how tests and trials kind of almost like reveal like what is like like what what love is you know sure. so I'm, I'm really thinking about you know personally i'm thinking about uh even this you know like you, when it talks about um what love is bears all things believes all hopes all the endures right. all things definitely endures right. all things um you know endure endurance i don't know always carries a connotation of what you know something of a trial something that you gotta endure sure. to get you know get through so you know it, you know it, it really that's an interesting thought of how you know like i said i love i love my wife um before like a a, a a big test we had we had some things early on but like but definitely I, I told her this after we were married we went through even more stuff and i'm like you know i feel like i'm <laughs> i feel like like i like it's in comparison how i felt how i thought i felt at the right. time versus after going through certain trials with her and coming on the other side i'm like man like i like it's like it's almost like a confirmation to me like oh i love you and like we kind of say that back and forth it's like oh man like i must i must love you like you know like mm. some of the stuff that we came through it's interesting going back to what you said jay and it's right like love is a choice and 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 you have to choose it absolutely and it's okay if you don't like i guess what i'm minute. thinking is I'm concerned that some people, let's say, you know, some people are so pressed to get in love mm. that they'll get in these situations and they'll be like, well, I, I have to stick through this to prove that I, I love you. I think it's certain people that you will, you'll be willing to go through certain things with mm -hmm. and it's certain people that you won't. This sure. Is, it's kind of awkward, but like I, w I was talking to this girl before I met my wife, and she had made this declaration that she would not be in a relationship with anyone until a certain date. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I always feel weird about stuff like that. But anyway, I mean, we were basically talking. We were basically dating. Mm -hmm. And so, but whenever we would do any, not like sexual, but anything that would be too dating, it would, she would always be like, no, I can't. No, because I'm in this thing. And so what I would always say is like, I, I guess, but when you meet the right person, and, and I could be wrong, and mm -hmm. I could have been wrong, but I mean, I was right, we're not together. But like, I think when you meet the right person, you will say, freak you to that. And so I'm just not that person for you. Mm -hmm. And so I think like, if some, uh, you know, I'm coming out with a book. I keep saying this for the past ten years. My kind of crazy. I think you, you, you and we we talked about this before in the podcast. My kind of crazy, but it's the idea that uh, when when we say that love is a choice, it's like I'm choosing to endure this with you. Yeah, absolutely. And it yeah. may be some people. And sometimes it's endure you. Yep. Yeah. Sometimes it's endure you. I'm choosing yeah. to endure you. Yeah. And it may be some people that you may not be willing to yeah. endure. Absolutely. So, But that question right there, I don't think a lot of people think about, like, when we're thinking about love, like, enduring things, enduring that person, enduring, like, like to, 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 to have in your mind, like, oh, I got to, you know, even though, like, like there's going to be some things that you're going to have to, like, you hear that word endurance, like, to couple that with love, like, a lot of times you don't bring those two words or they don't share and they don't live in the same place but mm -hmm. um like I, I think it is important that's why it's good to be around people um who have who have great marriage well who have marriages who have been together for a while to see like because you hear a lot of stories and mm -hmm. like a lot of times the stories is not perfect it sure. is an endurance thing right. um mm -hmm. and when you it, it kind of gives you a more complete i should say a complete view of with love and i think you know it just hit me i think that's what it is i think we have like a p like because everything that we're saying the good things are, that is part of love like right. we're not that's part of, but it's not complete and i think that's what it is like we don't have a complete view of love there are some other parts of love that um we we're lacking
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going down this rabbit hole of of love, and in my brain, and then, like you said, like not having complete love, and then also, like choosing. Like I was asking my wife after you know, like love is blind. Like in what ways I'm different than when we first met, mm-hmm. and I think there's a fear about me that has changed mm. from when we first met. Yeah. So if she fell in love with those things, I'm no longer that person. And so and and people evolve and and change and. And sometimes when we romanticize love, it's like, I'll love you no matter what. Sure. E- even sure. when, but I, I think we, we downplay. Uh, what the reality yeah, of it? Yeah, what the, the reality of it is and how we really would feel. I was listening to this podcast and they were talking about why people are really bad in guessing mm-hmm. how happy they will be in the future. Mm-hmm. Because and, it's all theoretical. You know, we could only guess. Like when you when, went to... I'll be with you no matter what. Right, yeah. Like, no matter what could be anything, but we can't really put our emotions yeah. in that state to really convey it. I, I think that that saying is really a hope. Right, right, right. Yeah. At its core. Uh-huh. Go ahead, bro. Oh, my bad. No, 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 no. I, I think I think that is true, and I forgot what I was going to say. So. It was the, the person on the radio was talking. Oh, uh, still. Let's rewind it. <laughs> still definitely <forget>. My bad. <laughs> no, it's, it's no, no problem, no. Uh, I just the wonder. truth, the reality of how what what it actually takes to uh to love like people yeah. fantasize, like um, me at my worst can deal with can deal with you at your worst, mm-hmm. whatever that is, whatever that is, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like I think this is why you know dating is so important because yeah. Uh, you real don't, dating real dating and real like mm. with a committed person you don't really get to meet and what does that mean worse what does that mean what's that real dating what real does dating. real dating look like i mean i think that could to be you. a whole thing well, but let's, i think let's give it a little it synopsis me and you and one person in a committed relationship just the two of you getting to know each other that's that's like courting how how the Christians would say the Christians would say courting. Oh God! The Christians would say courting. Right? Am I wrong? Yeah, they would. Courting. Yeah, that's what they I, would I say. Courting, right? the, that's so funny. So yeah. you and you and someone <laughs> dating, but y'all y'all are exclusive. Y'all are exclusive. Exclusive. In a committed relationship, <laughs> spending time getting to know e- each one. Right, right, right. And at some point, and it doesn't have to be a commitment there, other than the commitment to get to know one another. It's not an engagement because you could you can find out during that uh, that process that they are not actually who you you need to be with. True, mm-hmm. very true. True. I mean, a lot could happen in that, that, yeah, like, that uh, area. Um, now it's this weird thing, and the friend will be a little awkward, right? But uh, time is an important part. Mm-hmm. It can't be rushed. Well, that's the question. Mm-hmm. Because time is an important part of love sure. because you need to be able to meet that person at their worst. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not need to. That's the strong <laughs> to <laughs> declare. But I mean, it but you know what I mean? They, like, you know, like with your worst and their, that worst. See, you can't cre- can you create that? No, I, that's a good point to clarify. I don't yeah. think that you need. I, I think you need to be. And that's where patience. Um, sure. Mm-hmm. Because through patience, certain things will reveal themselves. You don't need to create it to, like, you don't need to create the test to see if you can pass it. Yeah. It's just you guys just need to be around each other and over time. Uh-huh. I got I got something. Uh huh. So this is something I never heard it before, but maybe someone has said it before. Mm-hmm. I feel like this area of getting to know one another, that's so important when, when talking about love and, uh, you got to love somebody to an extent to say where I'm exclusively getting to know you more. Like, I'm not going to entertain anyone. But I think that it should be a time to t- commit to strengthening your level of commitment mm. versus how much you like the word love, just the the word commitment. Like, like I am strengthening my commitment to you. 
Mm-hmm. And that co- that level of commitment ultimately is what will be the defining factor in you saying yes or no to marriage. Right. The commitment. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the, and not necessarily that love too. per se. Mm-hmm. Or low. Because so that's what that's cuz that, cuz that's what love is is really just an ultimate commitment to be with a person no matter what. Yeah. I mean if we look at Christ, you know, he committed to us while we were sinners. He died for us, you know. Mm-hmm. And we look at how how he navigated through life and God himself, not just Christ, but actually God, what he did and what he put in place on our behalf. Um that's a, an extraordinary love. Was that agape, yeah. right? Yeah. Agape, that's extraordinary yeah. love. So um was a God was it God love? Was it what's the definition for agape love? Agape is God's is type of love. God God like love. Yeah. But um, if we look at his example of love and his level of commitment mm. and how we can do that on an earthly level, yeah. I just think that at, at its core, strengthening your commitment to th- that other individual is really, you know, what love is. If we look at the what Fred uh, read in First Corinthians, you know, it endures all. You know, it doesn't hold any grudges. It's long suffering. You know, like. That takes a commitment, yeah. not only mentally, but emotionally. Like, if we take out the word love mm. and we talk about just saying this is what you need to do yeah. in order to make sure, like, it almost sounds crazy. Yeah. 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 How do you know when, like, we talk about, like, taking time, allowing things to take time. Sure. Like, how, how do you know when there's enough time? And Fred, you can answer as much as you want or okay. not as much as you want. So, I'm ready. Uh, I'm uh, ready. But like, you got married relatively soon. <laughs> Let's not say relatively. It's fast. It was fast. How, how how fast was it? Uh, Six months. You got married in six months? Yeah, from the time I met my wife to us getting married was six months. He had that Amazon Prime marriage. <laughs> <laughs> so, six months. Exp- expedite. So... And, and, and so, so I think this is a good, a good thing because, like, yeah. we talk about, like, time, and, but, That's you know, true. it worked out for you. Yep, it is. Would you, what is the balance of, would you do anything differently? I, not, of course not marry yeah, differently. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. Um, you know, me and my wife talk about this all the time. We was watching Love is Blind, and then, like, we caught ourselves judging, like, man, we judge it, but then we said... Uh, well, we can't really talk. <laughs> we can't. We can't really talk. But I guess for me, as far as different, I I would choose obviously to marry my wife all over again in the same amount of time. Um, but um, I think that's because that's that that's my story. That had to fall in love with my story. Right, right. The right. story that God wrote for us, and I think that's my story. Now, I would not personally tell like counsel or. Mm-hmm. Uh, say every that's that's everybody's story mm-hmm. um because there is some things that also with that story or with that decision there have come some things that we have to work through in our marriage that could have been avoided like the time thing mm-hmm. like a lot of things that we are still discovering about each other sure that are simple things that mm-hmm. could have like we would have dated for like a year or two mm-hmm. um like that we could have discovered so those, those are things that um that I would say things that we have to work through while married that could have been probably still had to work through, but mm-hmm. it wouldn't have been, it would have been in a dating context. Do you so, think there's more pressure working through the things because you're married, if that makes sense? Um, I don't, I don't personally, no, it's me personally, I don't think there's no pressure necessarily. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, because for us, it's just like, like we was like, I'm, I'm committed to you and mm-hmm. I'm down with you, you down with me. So it's no, I don't think it's no uh, pressure, but it's just one of those things to where it's more of like a, like an eye opener mm-hmm. type of thing. Like, oh, okay. Okay. I got, okay. I got a question for yeah. you. Um, so obviously, are you, so you said six months when you got married. Yeah. How, how soon into that six months did you throw in the, the L word um, that you can think of? Like how soon was that? It was, it, it was, it was probably early. Um, A month? Probably within the month, yeah. Well, yeah. All right, so you threw the L word out yeah. in the months. Like, what kind of intense 
communication had to be happening so, in that in that short time in order right. to use the like <laughs> give me an example like so you could have not have worked for those first four weeks <laughs> no i i pretty much wasn't working for those first four. um but no I, again it, it goes to our story mm-hmm. and the you know again i would not counsel anybody but i think there's a lot of layers to my story to where i felt comfortable to say that and then even ultimately comfortable you guys know me i if you would have said fred get married in six months like like that's not something that's like kind of out of my character but it's it's more so of i think for me why i was able to do that is because of what i came how can i put this i'm trying i'm trying to i'm trying to make it long that's why i'm trying to give you all a short version um i really uh, through prayer mm-hmm. and seeking God, that's number one. And from things I feel that was uh, revealed to me in a lot of different ways, I put it that way. Okay. Um, and then meeting my wife and our conversations, and um, we 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 didn't we didn't meet in person, right? Um, for a while, and we talked. We did a lot of communication on the phone. We had long conversations, mm-hmm. and I fell in love with who she was in the conversations. It almost it was like love is blind because I didn't really, I know, <laughs> I didn't See meet my her. Eyebrow raised. <laughs> I didn't meet her um, in person, but that is kind of like what, what was like the start of it. And then when we got met in person, it just kind of built from there. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Cause I, I know this is, a, no, please. if you, if you, if you only talked to her mm-hmm. and you never saw her, never saw. Her. And then y'all met after talking mm-hmm. and after, Cause I know you saw her first, but mm-hmm. if you if you didn't see her, yeah. and the conversation still happened, mm-hmm. do you think you would be where you are today? If I, it depends on what she looked like. <laughs> no, because <laughs> physical does play. Absolutely, does, I absolutely know. plays a part. I, know. I think obviously. I just want to say, sorry to cut you off, but mm-hmm. I can. Fred <laughs> was smith ten. Fred, when he saw his wife, <laughs> lost his mind. I lost my, I, I, I did, but I think, I think again, there is, like again, I, I fell in love with my story because I actually had a struggle with how I was feeling mm-hmm. because it was so like I feel like man, things were like I don't even know if I should propose. Like I, it was like this battle. And as you struggle. had the ring in your hand. I, 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 I actually, funny story, when I proposed to her, I had no ring. I had, Did you propose to her online? I No. I or over the no, phone? We we met. So by the time I proposed to her, she was living down here. Okay, cool. Um, so like, like we was going like, so we talked. We talked for a period of time, mm-hmm. um, and then we I Fred went episode. up there, <laughs> and then she came down here. Okay. But then again, going to our stories, mm-hmm. there's some things that has definitely lined up where she was uh she moved down here it was a crazy it's crazy story how like all those things kind of worked itself out and then while she was down here we dated and everything like that and long story short like i proposed and we went on and got married but um i think it, i think fred don't waste no time green <laughs> I, I, I i think i think time because like i said i wouldn't i personally wouldn't change it because mm. it's the story i believe that that was in god's plan uh, but we, sure. we we believe that our story w- is within god's plan and that's what um what it is but um i think ultimately in general like somebody it yeah, should time because there are some things that we have to work through like we had we have to figure out while we were married mm. um some things that most people who are married didn't Would've have known. to have mm. to work through or sure. ha- had that experience so and we talk about that sometimes like man i wish you know, we would have worked through that, but it's just it's just our story. You know, we fell in love. Deep, amen, amen. Uh, open book, you know. Yeah, I, I think that this is a, a, a great insight into love. I, I I guess if we can, uh, real quick, I guess the last thing would be, because I feel like this would be the question that a lot of people maybe mm-hmm. want to know is, What's that? how do you, how, in your opinion, how do you know? Man, my story is different. Uh, I, we don't have time for my story. In 1972, <laughs> oh my 
I was, I wasn't even born. But uh, how do you know? I think, uh, I think, I think everyone's knowing is different. Okay. But I, I think that one thing that is that is consistent is that it, you're sure about it. This, you're not. You don't waver. No one else's opinion matters. No one. No one cares. You don't care too much about who wh- who's saying what. Hmm. I think that when you know, you know within yourself, and it's an unshakable knowing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it could be annoying despite some things that that are that's not favorable sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, I I imagine that even Christ. Like if you look who Christ died for, it would be like why? Yeah. Yep. You know what I mean? Like everything would say no. Yep. Like take your twelve and go. Well, eleven, cause you know Judas. But anyway, <laughs> even he had a plan in uh in the in the whole picture. But um, I I just think that when you know, you know. Like nothing can shake you. It doesn't you you don't don't waver. And that's kind of what you need that unshakable because some things are going to come in life that's going to test that foundation and i think that a part of going through things is uh reinforcing the foundation that was set at the beginning mm. yeah yeah I, I think that's a good thing for me i mean and it, it, what you said is absolutely true and sometimes it seems like the most unhelpful thing because people always say when well, you know you know yeah but it's just the truth like when not you just know like i just to me, Debbie being my wife was just as as sure as my mother being my mother. It was just mm. like, this is the woman I'm going I'm to ride mm. it out with. And I, I just remember willing, being willing to just endure whatever, no. just endure life. And like, you know, and not even an ideal, idealized version of it. It's just mm. like, if I'm going to go through anything, mm-hmm. this is the person I want to go through no. with. Um, but... I think Jason brings up a good point. And this is the harsh thing that sometimes maybe we don't accept. And and I don't know, maybe it's not truth. Is that may not always be that case. Love has to be fed, nurtured. Mm. And uh, there's a continual commitment that needs to be had. So you may know at that moment, and you may be sure, but that might not always be you know, that might always be the case. You have to really work toward it. To yeah. make it happen. Real quick, one thing you said, when you said this is going to be the woman I, I, you know, ride out life with. Mm-hmm. It was a, a decision. Yes. A decision that was made. Yeah. What about you, Fred? Um, I think, <clears throat> I don't know if this goes along, but I think uh, uh, one thing that kind of, another thing that kind of helped me to kind of know outside of the things you said, mm-hmm. you guys said, I agree. Um, but I think it's important to have like a, a, I think it's important to have like a, like a true, a true like, like why you know like like, like almost like looking at yourself like, because I know for, like I we hear this a lot. It's just like sometimes people uh, want to rush in love or fall in love for the wrong reasons. Maybe there's an insecurity there. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's a like it's motivated by something that you may even be not even be conscious of, mm-hmm. and I think that is uh, important to have that real will help will help me to kind of filter because you know this is my second marriage. What uh, I I believe like the my first marriage there was no kind of looking at myself. It was outside of like the bad you know the wrong ideas I had with love and marriage looks like. But it was also some things within myself, some insecurity, um, things that kind of propelled me to a place of uh, of certain emotions and everything like that. But you know, out coming out of that and getting to a healthy place through counseling, that we always talk about, it's one big part of counseling, and getting to a healthy place to where I was healthy by myself, I was good by myself, to where when I had these emotions, I was able to properly filter them through like as opposed to it being motivated from a different place if that makes sense so i think you know just a little small thing you know i think that's also important to have like a a healthy diagnosis of yourself of like you know 
is it because I don't want to be alone? Like, are these feelings rising up? You know, just to have a have a healthy diagnosis. With it? Yeah, and if you if you want to get married because you think love is married, and you know, I think a lot of people they want to get married because they really want to be they want to be what they think being in love is like. Right, right. you you are in for uh, <laughs> a sweet surprise. But I, I think ultimately we know as believers. Uh, our perspective on love comes from God. He shows us great, great love in the midst of all our craziness. Apparently, we are the type of craziness that God in His grace can deal with. Lord knows why. Any other close thought? Love is beautiful. <gasps> Fall in love, everybody. Love <laughs> no, I don't beautiful. know. Love is beautiful, though. <laughs> when you know, you know. And once you have it, hold on to it. Because everything in this world... It, it, it wants to shake it loose. Come on. Man. So uh, we could go in love for another hour, but you know, God is good. God is good. All right, you guys be blessed. You've been listening to the Disruptor Faith Podcast. Uh, hit us up on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram at Disruptor Faith Podcast. Also, again, we always say this look at your phone. Have you been blessed? Has this encouraged you? Uh, if so, it would it would just be a huge blessing if you can leave us a review and send this to someone that you think uh, could benefit from it. It'd be a huge blessing. Again, leave us uh, leave us a review and then someone you think uh, can benefit from it. Pray that you guys are blessed, and we are out. <laughs>